welcome again and welcome to Cecile from Elements App. So we'll explain us to us today how to get Salesforce starter to the right people directly in Jira. So this is a second look at how to connect Salesforce to Jira. And with that, Cecile, over to you and uh, yeah, to Toulouse as far as, as I learned today. Um, and uh, I will just disappear and see you on the other side. All right. So, uh, well, well, hello again, everyone. Again. Uh, well, I'm sorry, I don't know any German word. Expect Guten Tag, probably. I went to Berlin once, um, but I didn't manage to, to remember any word I learned out there. So, well, in any case, I'm really happy to be here, even if it's uh, remotely, and I will go on, on in English with this presentation. And yeah, just I wanted to to thank specifically uh, all two group leaders here for creating these events and inviting me today. And just a quick introduction about me. Well, my name is Cecile. I will pass on with the last name to come too difficult to pronounce. Uh, and I'm working with a company named Elements as channel marketing manager. So in a few words, what uh, do we do at Elements? So it, um, it's a software company developing specifically add-ons for Atlassian tools. Uh, so the goal is really to kind of enhance these tools and answer specific needs uh, to which these tools cannot answer alone. And for example, integrating Salesforce with Jira. Uh, that's why we are going to see here today. So let's go on with that. Well, you're here today to this uh, Atlassian committee event. So I can suspect you're using say, Jira and probably you're using other tools um, side by side in your company, uh, like any kind of databases, Confluence, uh, and obviously some CRMs like Salesforce, uh, the topic of today. Well, there is kind of one limitation to, to that is that these tools cannot co really communicate and talk to each other. So you cannot get data from Salesforce into Jira. One drawback of that is that you can end up wasting a lot of time looking for information inside Salesforce uh, or manually copying it, potentially making mistakes um, by inputting data inside Jira. So we thought that there is a kind of a simple way to avoid that. And it would be to be able to connect these different tools and create Jira, use Jira as the hub of your all the information system and uh, providing inside Jira data from Salesforce. And to all you know, kind of an important information would be to, okay, you can provide this information, but importantly, you can provide it in context to your Jira user, uh, depending on uh, different factors, like the issue types, things like that. We are going to see that um, right after. And so to do that, uh, Elements develop an app named Elements Connect, which allows to bring its all data inside Jira. And it can be from any kind of data sources, uh, like SQL databases, REST APIs, uh, even Jira itself. And it's also working perfectly fine with a CRM like Salesforce. Uh, and uh, well, Salesforce is really one of the most known CRM, mostly used in a lot of companies. And it's really, I was, yeah, I think a need uh, we have seen a lot uh, working uh, with Elements and with Valiantis. Valiantis is our main uh, company. Uh, it's a big group on Atlassian Social Partners. So, uh, they are working a lot of clients using and providing services with the Atlas and tools. And so that's why we have a lot of use cases we can show on uh, what are the benefits of integrating Salesforce data inside Jira. Today, I'm going to focus on two of these uh, uh, use cases. But you must know that actually it works whatever the kind of Jira you're using, whatever it is uh, software, Jira service management, or Jira core. And the main goal is to be able to provide 
information from Salesforce and put it inside your Jira issues to the relevant uh, team using Jira. So about the two use cases we're going to see today. Firstly, uh, the goal will be to focus more on a business team and improving teamwork between different kind of teams, a project and a sales team. Uh, teams who are managing precise activity in CRG software. A second use case will be more focused on the customer side uh, when you're providing a customer support portal using Jira Service Management, well, formerly known as Jira Service Desk. So we're going to see these two use cases, and hopefully by the end, you will have a few ideas or maybe some questions uh, about uh, your own use case. And if you need help to implement this kind of um, use cases. All right, so let's get started here with the first use case focused on managing pre-sales activities inside Jira software. Uh, so to do so here, so I represented kind of Salesforce here. Within it, you're managing all your clients, your, client, your accounts. And well, I'm going to go inside a typical company. Um, with a typical sales team and one of this, uh, uh, this team member, a business account manager, for instance. Uh, well, today he just got off the phone with a new client, uh, MoMA, so the Museum of Modern Art. And potentially he will be able to close a new deal here. This is a global context. And each time he needs to close a deal, he has to provide a quotation and the estimation of the work needed and so he's working with inside um, with a pre-sales team internally. And to do so, if this, uh, these teams, they are using Jira software. So each time a new pre-sales request is coming, the salespeople are going to create a new pre-sales request inside Jira software. And there is something that is really important when they are doing so is that they, they want to be able to link the information, this request to the corresponding client and also get all the relevant information about this client directly displayed in the ticket. So creating something like that. So fetching data from Salesforce and putting it inside different uh, fields in your specific uh, pre-sale requests here. So this is for the global context. We're going to see how you can do that directly on a quick demo here. So here we are on typical Jira software instance, you may recognize it. And so I'm the, uh, the business account manager here and I'm going to create my pre request. requests. Already filled in the summary, the description to ask for more information and estimation on how it's going to take to migrate Confluence to Jira Cloud. Well, kind of a typical, uh, current topic right now. And so I did already uh, all that. And also I have to field three fields here at the bottom. These three fields are linked to Salesforce directly. And I can uh, select here in the first field, the account, so the client uh, linked to this uh, process request. So I just have to select the Museum of Modern Art here. And then my two seconds fields are going to be updated to only give me the options available linked to the Museum of Modern Art. So I just have to select my contact, every contact here and the opportunity is impacted by the pre-sale request and create the ticket. And then I find it everything again on the view side, of course with direct links to the Salesforce, as you see, like they are in blue. And more information on the opportunities here. So you can directly find inside your ticket all the information fetched from Salesforce. And also you may notice that you are getting 
more information, you can see we have the amount and stages of each opportunity here, which wasn't available when I created my issue before. So the goal here is really to be able to give all useful information, all relevant information directly inside the ticket for people, for, yeah, for these different teams, pre-sales, sales, consulting, to work together and get all the information from Salesforce up to date, of course, uh, because if it's going to be updated in score on the Salesforce side, it's going to be updated also here in my ticket. So basically, oh, sorry, I, yeah, that's it. Um, that was it for the first use case. Now I'm going to, to move on the second one, uh, more focused on external needs when you're working with customer directly using Jira Service Management. So Jira Service Management, you probably know it. It's uh, an Atlassian tool you more use specifically to provide a uh, support portal for your customers, or you can use it internally also, of course. But here in this use case, we are managed to company managing customer support with uh, Jira service management. And when one of our clients here has a problem, so this client is John Bound, is uh, also registered inside your CRM Salesforce. And well, just bon John Bound, sorry, not James, he's having an issue and typically what he do, what he does, is going to connect to your support portal in Jira Service Management and create a new ticket, a new incident. Uh, there is kind of a pain point here for a support agent. If you don't get all the information from Salesforce directly inside your ticket, if you just use Jira, Jira uh, itself, well, you just get the login password of your client of the reporter of the issue, and that's it. So what's uh, something that could be useful here for the agent is to have all the information he needs on the speci on this specific client, John Bond. And this information is registered directly inside Salesforce, as you see here. So same as, as the previous um, example, you can totally display the useful information inside your ticket. And actually this would be this uh, will be really useful for, for this support agent to have all this information directly there. So we're going to see how it works directly on uh, on the portal doing all the, the demo and the scenario. Uh, so again I switch to another uh, Jira instance. It's my specific uh, support portal, customer portal, and I'm connected as John Bound here. And I'm going to here raise a, um, a system report, a uh, system problem, sorry. I'm having trouble with the internet here, so I'm feeling the summary. I'm also feeling the description. I already used it. Giving on some indication of the impact and agency and create my tickets. So as John Byrne, as the client, this is kind of uh, really typical. I have everything here. And now I'm going on the agent side to see how the tickets look like, looks like. So I go here there on the portal on the agent side. I get, I open my tickets, the general internet outage. I have all the information field, the type of incident, the impact, and I have three fields here, client's account, details, and opportunities. Same as previously, these three fields are populated with information from Salesforce. But there is one difference here, is that it's everything here is based on the reporter name or ID. Uh, so it means that based on the reporter ID, so John Bound, the app made directly the identification um, between John Bond inside Salesforce and John Bond connected on the support portal. And based on that, the three fields have been populated, giving information on this, uh, on this specific client, giving him the global account company he's working in, 
more details on how to contact him, for instance, if he is the if sorry, if the agent needs to call John Bond to specifically help him with uh, the internet or with Wi-Fi configuration, you can also see all the opportunities uh, bought by the, by this client and to see maybe, okay, this is that which is impacted by, by the incident. Well, you can actually display it, any information you want. Once it's available in Salesforce, you can display it here. This is for the example. Um, but you can display, for instance, the language spoken by the client in order to adapt to that. And mainly for, for the agent, it's really more convenient to have all this information directly inside the ticket than to have to either go inside Salesforce if, if he has the access to that, uh, to find the information on this client or to ask uh, directly in commands on the ticket additional information to the client. There is no need to do that. He gets everything already there and based on the reporter. So yeah, I won't go further on that. We maybe answer your question at the end. Uh, just a quick conclusion on these two use cases, on this connection between Salesforce and Jira. Uh, I think that, yeah, really it, uh, can really help a lot of people from different companies, so like sales, consultings. It really helps them like communicate uh, first between each other, have the same information up to date, of course, and so you can really close the gap, the information gap between these teams, uh, so that everybody is on the same page, because of course they have access to the same information inside uh, the tickets they are working on inside Jira. Uh, same for the support team, uh, when they are using Jira service management, for example, they are providing with all the information they need about the customers raising requests on the bottle. And well, first uh, you can save for them, actually is the, it can help them provide more efficient support as they do not need to lose time looking for information outside or asking for a customer through the portal. And so, yeah, in terms of efficiency, I think it's great for the support team and even over teams around this, uh, this circle here. And I added also customers, of course, um, because for them, it can be really valuable in the sense of, as we have seen in this support example, the customer doesn't need to enter any additional information on the issue creation. Uh, but the support team has everything he needs there on his side. So you don't have to overload the creation form when they are raising an incident and they don't have to fill a lot of, a lot of information on them or answer uh, comments afterwards. So I think, yeah, it's really helped in general having a more efficient communication between every actors, every team members, and to display only the key information, as we have seen at the beginning, uh, to give the right people the relevant information from Salesforce inside Jira. Right, so yeah, that's it for me here. Uh, just, uh, we just wanted to say also that I showed you here two, two specific use cases on how you can work with uh, Salesforce, uh, but we have a specific demo portal I uh, just put the URL um, at the bottom here in green, and you can totally go there and try some uh, other examples and also download configuration. If you're thinking of something uh, useful for you, uh, you can try it on. The configuration is available for download. Um, and well, I hope maybe you get some ideas of uh, use things you can do connecting Jira with Salesforce or another CRM or another tool. The question would be, I saw on the marketplace that uh, Elements Connect is available for server data center and cloud. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there is a connect for Salesforce, which is only available 
for server and which is an add-on for Elements Connect. Could you help me mm. clarify yeah. that? I, because I didn't... Uh... Sure. Mm. Um, in fact, uh, in, it's true. Yeah, on the, when you should go on the marketplace, you will find mm. so G Elements Connect for Cloud Server Data Center, and you will find so on the side another specific add-ons for Salesforce. This add-on was created a few years before, and uh, but now it has been integrated within the last version of Elements Connect. So if you're using Elements Connect from the version 6.0, uh, the Salesforce integrator is already there, so it's, you know, you can use it directly. Uh, if you're using a previous version, so like version 5, for instance, uh, and you want to use Salesforce, you will need to add this add-on, but it's a free add-on. There is no need to buy both. But really, I think we encourage everyone to, to go on the last version of the app, which uh, is the app uh, globally maintained uh, every time. Okay. And it's really more convenient because also the interface has been improved in terms of um, user administrations. And it's really more convenient to use the Salesforce integrator directly there in the last version. Oh. So that's why but, uh, there are two on the marketplace, but uh, actually from the last version, there is only one. Oh, okay, so if I if I buy it fresh, I do not need the extra no. connector. So no, okay. no. Um, and because you support all platforms, um, did you have customers or did you have already have experiences for migrating from server data center to cloud? Um, any experience and how would that work? Is that possible? Mm. Is, it, is it easy? Um, does it make life better? I don't know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's, that's the main question around here uh, right now. Um, so about the cloud version, if I focus only on the Mets Connect uh, app, because we are developing other apps, and, but for Elements Connect, the cloud version is quite new. It has been released uh, a few months ago. And for now, you don't, you won't have all the same features as you have on the on-premise uh, version. So to migrate, uh, Probably, yeah, there is no like uh, direct way to migrate. You will have to analyze first if uh, the cloud app is answering all the needs uh, you you have. And mm -hmm. uh, and then, uh, yeah, we like support you and we can help you in the process of migrating, but there is, there is no tools to do that directly. So it's going to be more manual actions. For now, we are working on that to be able to easier this process, um, of course. But for our right now, uh, I think you, the best is that you you try the cloud version and to see with us. You can contact us on our portal support support portal, of course, and to we can help you see what you can do in terms of migration. But uh, for example, if I go on the Salesforce uh, use case. The Salesforce uh, REST API is not um, included yet on the cloud version. You can use it with databases, uh, this uh, specific type of data sources, uh, but REST API is for Salesforce, it, not, it doesn't work uh, yet. Uh, so yeah, we have on our documentation a specific page mentioning every differences and always up to updated once we are releasing versions and new features. So we, you can follow the process uh, there for next uh, features, next releases. Okay. Right. And how often do you release? Uh, and is that on the roadmap? So the Salesforce connector for cloud? Yeah. Uh, we release at least and sometimes sooner. We have sprints, we're working with an agile process. Mm -hmm. So every three weeks, we have a new release for sure, but we can release more frequently depending on if there is a big features already re ready for develop deployment, we can release it sooner than that. So almost every two weeks, I think there is a new release. Um, okay. There. So and the Salesforce connector is on the roadmap for? Yeah, summer, it's on the summer, spring. it's on the roadmap. <laughs> I cannot tell you specifically okay. for when. Uh, I know the priority right now is also focused a lot on security on cloud. Okay, because mm. it's a you know, big uh, concern for our clients, for them to be able to migrate from several data center to cloud. But uh, yeah, it's on the roadmap <laughs> for sure. Okay, 
and we have a question in the chat. How does the cloud version integrate into the issue? Is it searchable in, as in JQL? Uh, okay, uh, just to be sure if I understand the question well, right now. Um, so could you search the sales? Okay, there is no Salesforce mm -hmm. data right now because the REST API is not there. But yeah. let's say you integrate a database. Can you search the data in JQL? Yeah, sure. Actually, uh, yeah, but that's it. Uh, if let's say you're connecting a database with Elements Connect in Jira Cloud, uh, you can create, you can search in JQL, and you can even, if you need, create queues based on these uh, fields created with Elements Connect. So yeah, the answer is yes, it's uh, searchable on JQL. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I hope that answers this question. So I have a related not... question to that yeah. also. So, yeah. so let's say, say with the server version because it's released. So let's say that I have, I created the custom field mm -hmm. from elements. I will integrate with database. Yeah. And then can I use the value of that field, for example, in script runner? Because mm. that's something that I use quite often that I use the data from fields in scripts and depends on the action. Let's say I, I got a, a version of something from database and now it depends on that. I want to run the specific script that will do some automation there. And most of the add-ons or some of the add-ons have a problem that the data is in the strange format or like specific mm -hmm. format that you can't fetch the data. So. So yeah. do you have such a case? You know such a case, or maybe that question is too specific and no, no, no. Actually, you know, it's, uh, it's a really good question, and uh, yeah, we are compatible with um, script runner, for instance, mm -hmm. and okay. other add-ons. Um, like I don't know, but if you're familiar with, we have profiles, easy BI also, so you can use easy BI to. Who doesn't? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's enterprise why. Enterprise level components, uh, companies, <laughs> we have over thirty others. So, so easy BI script runner, it's must have. So how you yeah, can live without usually, that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we are really aware of that, and that's why we are uh, building integration with this kind of add-ons, and so you can totally use data in the fields created with Elements Connect and build reports on that with Easy BI, uh, creating or launching scripts uh, with Script Runner based on Elements Connect fields. Yeah. I remember we had your add-ons and we used that before they will cut us from the word with the proxy, but for connection what? to other sources, yeah. But what was the name before Elements rebranding? What was the name yeah, of Yeah, it was Enfeed. Ah, uh, and fit, of course, yes, it's, and yeah. the green logo. I remember the green. That. Yeah, oh that's it. my god, yeah, that that was yeah, yeah, of course. If you click on the documentation in the connector for Salesforce, you get to an end feed site. It's still the end feed documentation. Yeah, maybe it's because yeah, the Salesforce connector is yeah. was before the rebranding, yeah. and uh, now we have um, um, the new brand documentation from the version six. Probably. At the ATI use and feed, I still have a lot of people referring to it as and feed and also exoset. I don't know if you're if now it's elements yes. copy and sync. Yes, yes, yes. I remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean we still use and feed in um, some instances because we have plenty of instances and in some of them for mm. I remember that we have a funny integration or we had funny integration that we in the past in the Jira was really um, difficult to store some for for example passwords. So we yeah. had a file on the server that you can connect with Enfit and fetch that password and use that in the script, for example. That that was Ooh. interesting use case that we yeah. had, I remember. That's yeah. Where I never heard of that. Yeah. That's so nice. you, you could connect to anything, I remember. So you can connect mm -hmm. to CSV and get the data from CSV. Yeah, or... totally. Yeah. yeah, it's working with any kind of data source. Uh, so yeah, today we focused specifically on Salesforce because it's really basic and a tool used around a lot, a lot of companies. But uh, yeah, if you have, I'm thinking uh, a database, SQL database, a CSV file, JSON, XML, uh, what I'm thinking of. But do you know the format of the data which uh, in which it's stored in database? 
So if you get some it's... data from database, what's the format of the uh, value? Uh, so actually, it's JSON it's... or XML or stream? It's, or... Uh, it's going to be st once uh, Elements Connect does the request fetch data, it's mm -hmm. using the, the Jira from, it's installed in the Jira database. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure, I think it's going to, uh, yes, it's JSON. It was XML before, but uh, now we moved it uh, to JSON file. It's more convenient to request everything. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Th mm. That was, I was thinking that I read about that switch. So I wanted to ask. About yeah. Mm, like yeah. I remember that. Because I remember that it was XML, but yeah, JSON. Mm. Cool. Yeah, yeah, we changed a few months ago, and so to do that also, of um, build specific um, tools inside the app to help people do some bulk uh, migration from XML to JSON. And for searching in JQL, you use the specific functions that are provided by Adam, probably, right? Mm, what do you mean? Sorry, I'm not so sure. If, I understand. You, if you search in the JQL for values of the fields that are from elements, you need to use a yeah. specific like uh, syntax from the functions that were brought by the uh, installing of the add-on reg. Uh, well, if you are requesting a GQL database, uh, you, yeah, you're, you're using basic GQL language for the query. Mm -hmm. And so, and then to, for the templating part, so for the part where you're displaying the information, you can, Personalize that. Uh, it's uh, mainly uh, HTML and CSS if you want to brand it a little bit uh, with colors and images. Uh, but the templating part, and so, and you can integrate some velocity variables also. It's okay. A, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's kind of a, a running poll that we have. Uh, you are, because you are in, you are working in Salesforce integration and all that. What's your opinion about Salesforce buying Slack? And <laughs> what do you think that will be like in the future? That's just a opinion poll that we have. We ask other people mm. who are working either in Slack or in Salesforce. What will that be like? Uh, good question. Mm. Uh, let's see. Well, on a professional point of view, uh, for us, it could be kind of an opportunity to integrate some Slack data potentially uh, inside Jira and like add more features to this app Elements Connect, I think. Uh, but then I don't, actually I'm, I would just like wait and see on a personal point of view, maybe more wait and see to see what we're going to do with the tool. Uh, I'm using Slack myself uh, more for sharing information with uh, people around the Atlassian ecosystem. Hmm. And it's really convenient. And so I'm not really sure. I I don't have more information. Maybe you do more information on the roadmap or what they are thinking about doing this with the app. No, it, um, the, no we, are, we are, because there's a, we have this question because there's a lot happening around uh, Atlassian and Slack integration and then Salesforce buying Slack because we had Hulp uh, a couple of weeks ago um, and they are going to replace a lot of the stuff uh, that's uh, now Jira Slack integration mm -hmm. and uh, Hubert already has this use case that uh, he received an email that certain functions have to be moved to Hulp. Um, for the geo integration. So this whole ecosystem is shifting in a way currently yeah. because right now you have Slack integrations with everything, with Ops Genie, with Jira, with Confluence, with Hulp, with whatnot. So if you wanted to integrate Slack, you have, I don't know, three or four different options just with Atlassian uh, mm. products. And that's shifting that's currently. So um, that's an opportunity for a lot of apps because you get all the the conversation data for the ticket, which may not happen in Jira or not in the comments, but in Slack. Mm -hmm. But you need that data somehow in the Jira issue so that you kind can find it if there was a discussion in Slack or something. And that could maybe be interesting for for um, applications that you sync with, like Salesforce, for example. If your customer representative wants to know what the discussion was that led to a solution and that discussion is in Slack, then that mm -hmm. may be interesting from the Salesforce perspective as well. So at least to find it somewhere. Um, 
and that's why this question, what happens with Slack? Um, and um, because there are some interesting options on the Salesforce side, also with Heroku as a Slack bot platform, whatever, so that you can yeah. write automation thingies in Heroku to do stuff. Um, I don't know. So that's why we asked this question about yeah. from everybody who is any in any way involved with yeah. either of them. So that's, mm. <laughs> thank yes. you for answering it. Yeah. So <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> thank um, you. for your presentation. Thank you for joining us today. And um, uh, let us know when um, Salesforce Connector for Cloud is available. So when you have integrated REST AT API into Elements yes, Connect, because then we would really like to talk with you about the first customer that you migrated. And if you can bring him mm -hmm. or her along, we would really, really like to hear, <laughs> hear about that, how that worked because <laughs> right. that is an interesting topic and that will that migration topic will keep us all busy and mm, make us all true. make us all rich in the next three years or something like that i don't know yeah, yeah i think so and so I with we'll that, have uh, yeah yeah just so you will probably have mm. more migration cases even if it's not to focused on salesforce but mm -hmm. we already have a lot of questions on how to migrate uh either yeah, yeah on over use cases uh so yeah, we'll be really happy to to come back and discuss about that. Yeah, be really nice. So perfect. Um, thank you again. Um, yeah, stay healthy, stay safe, um, and the best of times. And hopefully, mm -hmm. we can see each other again sometime soon. Yeah. In a real summit, maybe, or in a on a real team tour. I hope or so. Yeah, that would be really nice. <laughs> okay. So see you around. Have a nice Thanks evening. Thanks a lot.